We're going to start. Maybe some more people will be coming in, but uh, I think it's, um, it's a nice time to start because uh, all the people are here, and I thank you for coming uh, and, and joining us, all the people that I know and all the people that I don't know, joining your friends here. Um, it's warm hearting to, to see everybody here. Um, so I want to start by uh, explaining what this event is. So it's organized by uh, Apod Sugora, and Apod Sugora is um, an association, and I put the books on display at the back, so when we'll have the drinks after, you can look at the books. Uh, it's basically Angela Liras and myself who um, have uh, started this association in 2019, and we've held a poetry reading in her beautiful uh, neoclassical house in Plaka. But since now she cannot be here with us at this time, uh, we're doing many events so that you don't forget about Sagara. And Angela is part of the organization and everything that um, we're doing tonight. And um, when we started in 2015, um, we, we had um, Katerina Angelaki Ruk as one of the readers, who's a very famous uh, Greek poet. And we were so blessed because she helped us, um, uh, she helped us uh, with the organization and she gave us counsel and personally she also helped me and gave me counsel. So this day is dedicated to Katerina Angela Kiruk, who was uh, uh, this poet, she had a house in Eina that was a ranch with pistachios, and she had participated in many of the um, poetic adventures in the history of Greece. Uh, a monumental woman, um, a woman um, who um, wrote a, a lot of poetry and translated a lot of the foreign uh, writers. Um, like uh, she was Heaney, that's the only one that comes to mind now, but she translated many authors. So I decided as a dedication to read one of her poems. It's called The Blessing of Deficiency. This is Katerina Elakiri. Unfortunately, I cannot read this in English, in Greek. I'm so, so sorry, but I'll be reading in English. Uh, you want, you can see some of her poems that are on the books, in the books that are on the table there after when we break the uh, reading. So, <clears throat> the blessing of deficiency. I am grateful to what I lack. What I lack protects me from what I'll lose. All my abilities that dried up in the abandoned field of life protect me from movement into the void, useless, pointless. What I lack teaches me what I have left, disorientates me because it projects images from the past as if they were promises for the future. I can't, I don't dare, even by a passing angel to imagine because I descend on another planet with no angels. Love from pure desire became a good friend. Together we taste the sadness of time. Please deprive me, I beg the unknown. Deprive me even more so I can survive. So that's uh, Katerina Angelaki. <laughs> so now, because this is something that we're doing, it's like a collective. I want to introduce all the people here. So I'm going to start. We are very lucky because we have uh, a brochette of a poet and a musician, and we've tried that formula before, and it seems to be working. That you know, it's uh, we have a bit of uh, poems and words, and then sounds and music, and it kind of um, blends in together nicely. So, um, Yanis Hulis, did I say it right? Hulis? <laughs> Hulis, okay. Um, is, um, so 
So I met him through the band uh, Strovoli that he was part of before, but now he has changed. He has a, a new band called uh, I Ios. Yes. Ios. And so he plays a, a range of different instruments that he, he will uh, share with you tonight. So, and um, I want to talk about uh, the filmmaker here today, uh, Maria Angeli, who is um, a video artist and who does a lot of art films. And uh, we're so lucky to have her um, film our event tonight. And um, I want to talk about uh, the studio here, or the place where you are. This a beautiful, amazing place. We're so lucky in the Poets of Gord to find every time a more beautiful house than the next. Last time we were in the house of uh, uh, Leto and Angelo Catacuzeno. It's a museum on Amalias. And uh, this time we're here and before we were in Angela's neoclassical house. So we're very blessed. So this space is called Moon Station Athens, and it was originally a, 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 a three-room office that Olympia Zografos, a British-Greek interior designer and artist who trained at um, the leading design school KLC in London and moved to Athens in 2019. So this is her private studio and showroom. So she designed everything that you see here. You, I invite you to walk around, like even the toilets are amazing. I mean, don't hesitate. The kitchen, the look around, it's magnificent. So she works with uh, carpenters, craftspeople, neon makers, suppliers, and collaborates closely with engineers. And so that's how we get the result of these designs. Okay, and now uh, the cherry on the cake are the poets. So I'll introduce you to our two poets. Uh, Georgia Pavli Duhir is an American writer and painter intermittently living in Greece and in the US. Um, she had her MA in Urdu literature in Lucknow, India. How interesting. And uh, more boring from Manchester Metropolitan <laughs> University in the UK. Um, her work is widely published. Uh, you can go to her Facebook page. And uh, by the way, I put some of the books of all the um, of all the people here, and also of the people of the Association of Poets Agora that you can uh, please have a look at. There's Ofersa Pergis, Yanis Dukas etc. There's m many more. So uh, she has published in the Dada Journal. Well, it's nice that I read a few of the different publications because it'll give you a feel of the surrealist poet that she is. Um, so there's Clockwise Cat, Cotillo Review, Philosophical Egg, and so now um, Trainwreck Press launched her shop book Inside the Black Hornet's Mine Tunnel in 2021. Now her um, Anvil Tongue Books uh, published her full-length book of poems and painting Haunted by the Living and the Dead. It's on the table there, you can look at it. And. Um, and she has uh, forthcoming discussions and everything. So Georgia Pavlidou, if you want to um, look her up later on. Uh, our other poet is uh, Elena Fentaki, who um, was born and raised in Athens. Also, she considers Tinos Island our, her homeland. And I think I would love to be from Tinos. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's magic. Um, she was an airline personnel from, uh, for 20 years, so she traveled the world, met uh, many artists and poets and musicians, and um, she started writing lyrics as at the, her beginning. It was on her bucket list, and then uh, she collaborated with Tanya Tsanaklidou for, is she here? No? No. No, okay. For an LP, Dragusia, to... 
παραξένου κόσμου. No, του παραξένου κόσμου. Her first novel, The Siga e Thea Lena Kimate, was published in 1998. Um, again, uh, I want to tell you that you have her books on the table. If you would like to buy a book also, that's possible. There's not so many of uh, Georgia. I think there's only one, so if you don't want to fight for it, but um, there's a few of Elena and a few of mine too. So, um, she has a new poetry collection to come in a few months, but you didn't write the name here. And um, she's blessed with two daughters and, uh, and some of her friends here, and the other ones that are not here. Okay. An unreasonably smiling sky. Space dissolves me in front of an unreasonably smiling sky. The trees rolled their eyes. The sidewalks laughed at my non-existence. It is there where you headed towards your absence the faceless voice in my head whispered, Drink here from the fountain of my non-being, it made me say out loud. But none of the random passers-by moved in my direction. Saudade for Antoine. Reading Artoo's poetry, I savored the flavor of love. For the last time, I knew for sure I had never tasted before. And his words peeled a desire from myself, a craving resembling a coffin buried upside down in my imagination, or a yearning to exhume that unique thing that won't ever happen again, yet has endless times before at the graveyard of my future. First of all, I want to thank you, Karine, for the invitation. It was a great pleasure to see you and all these uh, lovely people here. Kalispera ke pomena. Ένα πράγμα που δεν είπα στο βιογραφικό είναι ότι αυτά που θα διαβάσουμε απόψε είναι από την πρώτη ποιητική συλλογή μετά το Νόμπελ που λέγεται Παγωθραυστικό και κυκλοφόρησε το 2018 από τις εκδόσεις Τράκα. Ελάφι. Εκείνο το ελάφι που σκότωσες πρώτη φορά. Αυτό ήθελα να είμαι. Και όσο θα ζυγώνεις να ακούω το σπαραγμό και το θρίαμβο να παλεύουν στην ανάσα σου μέσα. Και πως θα αφήνεις την ξερή παλάμη σου πάνω μου, εγώ, το πρώτο σου αίμα, τον οπό, να αφήνω πάνω στην κάτω χρυμνήμη σου. Στα μάτια μου μέσα να σε τραβήξω και εκεί να καταστρέψω υπομορφή φωτός που σβήνει τα προσωπικά σου δεδομένα, ό,τι περηφανεύτηκες πως είσαι. Να μπλέκομαι μέσα σου έτσι, που να μην ξέρεις ποιος είμαι το εγώ και ποιος το εσύ. Αυτό ήθελα να είμαι, το σκοτωμένο ελάφι που κουβαλάς. Σκληρή καρδιά. Κάποτε μου έδωσαν να δοκιμάσω σκληρή καρδιά. Θα σας αρέσει, είπε ο οικοδεσπότης. Στα μέρη μας θεωρείται πρώτης τάξεως μεζές. Σε αντίθεση με το όνομά της, η σκληρή καρδιά είχε σάρκα μαλακή. Μα κάνοντας να καταπιώ, άνθρωποι πουλούκια ξεχύθηκαν μέσα στο στόμα μου. Άλλοι κλειπαλούσαν για πίστοση και άλλοι για συγχώρεση. Κάποιοι ζητούσαν ελεημοσύνη και κάποιοι άλλοι συμπόνια. Κι όσο μασούσα, η μπουκιά δυνα μικραίνει μεγάλο. Βλέπω δεν σας ενθουσίασε το πιάτο μας. Μίλησε ο οικοδεσπότης, βλέποντας την έκφρασή μου. Κι εγώ, με το στόμα ακόμα μπουκωμένο από την αποτρόπη λιχουδιά, 
Για να είμαι ειλικρινής, προτιμώ τα αμελέτητα. Thank you. I'm going to add something that I'm really proud of is that we read in all different kind of languages. I mean, what is the, the, the staple of a poet's agora is to be a bilingual poetry association. So the fact that tonight we're reading in those uh, languages is really nice. So uh, since we're in this space that it co is called Moon Station Athens, I have a poem uh, called Interview with the Moon, and I thought it would be appropriate for Rana and Olympia to read that. So I'm going to read first in English and then in Greek. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, yes, I have more than once in my life suffered the pangs of lack of light. My albedo is not quite right. Dark thoughts lurking. I'm not good at emoting. My childhood was seldom joy filled, as my father's rays came to be came to me muddled. My mother, the earth, had so much on her own that she could not have my needs be known. So I pouted and looked the other way. No, not at all. I don't do it on purpose. The tides follow my trajectory. I don't impose. It's just gravity. I'm only Celine. The sun, my master, allays my orbit. His is twice greater than my inordinate responsibility. No, not to this day. But I see the useless satellites every day, whether I'm there or out of sight. Piles of junk orbits with and around me. What is to happen to all these debris when my proxy life ends? Yours will dim dark. Είτε είμαι εκεί, είτε 
vendi a fennome. Un chisco che di un telefono giro che mazzino. Ti sai ne me ho la tutta ta sintrimia. O tal i eterofoti doi mu teliosi. I di che a sas sam bohsi sa skotinjaksi. Maybe because my first reading was about absence and about non-being and about uh, the things we crave or the things we wanted but then we realized we cannot achieve them. I forgot to thank you. <laughs> thank you for inviting me. <laughs> thank you for inviting me. So, um, my second poem um, titled A Vampire Called Eurydice and it's a satire on the myth like uh, you know the myth where Eurydice is in Hades and waiting for Orpheus to come and rescue her so it's a satire and I'm also mock I'm also it's also a social critique maybe uh, on how difficult it is to date and find love in this in the 21st century and how maybe some people give up and uh, so uh, so that's uh, the and actually I, I, I hope I'm res I'm doing this with the utmost respect I want to dedicate it to uh, Katerina uh, Thank you. Yes, I want to dedicate it to her, this poem. Okay. All right. So, here goes. A vampire called Eurydice. How comfortable the warm darkness of caskets. Doubtlessly finer than nowadays low quality blood. Still, much to my surprise, Orpheus eventually arrived. I followed his back for a little while, bumping against a shadow or two, more to stay true to the myth, I must admit, instead of really wanting to. Yet I was curious, will he succeed this time around? As was to be expected, he turned his head once again. Tired, stuffy, dark, circled eyes looked at me for the umpteenth time. He didn't impress me much, I help, I cannot help but confess. Or was he a she or a they? Difficult to say today. Even genitals have minds of their own on this present day. Relieved that my hero had so blatantly failed once more, I returned to the comforting darkness of my sepulchre my relationship with light, by the way, has never been exceptionally bright. Hades isn't such a place after all, I thought, while my coffin welcomed me back inside. The embittered goddess Persephone stared at me with her usual pitch black eyes. I drooled, gazing back at her magnificent mean, pale, and perforating face. And before I could even think of rising up and lick her splendid but insipid dark lips, her hungry tongue, deep inside my menial and brittle little mouth, was already done circling around mine. So, so comfortable, I couldn't help but think the convivial darkness of my casket, much, much more exquisite and finer than nowadays low quality blood. Thank you.
Τι θυμάμαι εκείνη την Πέμπτη. Ήταν η τρίτη μέρα που έβρεχε χωρί σταματημό. Υπολογίζω πω το νερό μέσα μου είχε φτάσει ελάχιστα κάτω από τα μάτια, γιατί έτσι που τα ανοιγόκλεινα κάθε φορά, ξεχύλιζε για πολύ λίγο. Είχαμε καθίσει γύρω από το τραπέζι της κουζίνας και ακουμπούσε ο καθένας επάνω ό,τι είχε. Εγώ μια κουρασμένη αγάπη. Εσύ μια απόφαση τσαλακωμένη από τις τόσες φορές. Εγώ μια κονσέρβα ελπίδας από καιρό λιγμένη. Και εσύ ένα μπουκάλι συμπυκνωμένο χυμό πίκρας. Εγώ λίγη υπομονή και εσύ ακόμα λίγη. Μετά εγώ άφησα ένα σπασμένο χαμόγελο και εσύ ένα ξανακολλημένο αστείο. Ένα ποίημα χωρίς φεγγάρι εγώ και εσύ μια πρόταση ακροτηριασμένη στο «Θα». Σηκωδίκες να φύγεις και από τη δεξιά σου τσέπη κύλησε στο πάτωμα ένας όριμος λωτός. «Για να τον μοιραστούμε» είπες. «Είχα κι εγώ ένα κλαράκι μη μελισμόνι να σου δώσω».
That's the guitar, I guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing is the guitar, the next. Okay. This is a, a, a poem dedicated to uh, Philip Lamantia. He is uh, um, an American mystical surrealist poet um, of Sicilian ancestry. Um, tremendous inspiration for me. Um, and there are two other characters that I want to highlight. One is uh, uh, that are mentioned in the poem. One is uh, Hildegard from Bingen, and uh, I'm, I'm, uh, she's a character, mystic, uh, from the Middle Ages, Central Europe, German, uh, or German-speaking, and uh, uh, one thing that impressed me reading about her was that her knowledge of Latin was so-so, but her poetic capabilities in the language were undeniable. So I find it fascinating that although, um, um, well, grammatically, etc., her knowledge of the language was not perfect, mm -hmm. yet her poetic cap capabilities were amazing. And of course, she was a polymath and, 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 and did so many other things. And, uh, um, and then there is um, John Coltrane, who is a, uh, a jazz musician, very well known. Um, but uh, uh, he's, I find him also very inspiring because of uh, the spirituality that is found in, uh, in his music and in uh, the improvisation, which comes very close to um, the, the the surrealist auto, automatic writing. So, why on Eighth Street? Contemplating my female poetry ancestors, not Sappho, but Hildegard von Bingen and Lala come to mind, and unexpectedly these two co-joined conjure. Saint Coltrane's image, a Siamese triplet bound by the blinding intensity of the living light. Listen in a uniquely visual way to the sound of this light. Turn inward and hear mandalas meander on pineappled boundaries of the pre-sexed brain. This is Hildegard's syntax. To a sentiam socia angelorum et civis sanctorum. You are indeed the companion of the angels and a citizen of holiness. Enormous transparent legs with whirling black dolphins stay suspended high up in turquoise summer sky. My mind boomed with this view and half notes grilled my body. Via 3rd and 7th Street, I was guided to 8th Street. Philip, on 8th Street, my body re-entered the uterine source of life. It is there where you will find Hildegard's syntax. Caritas abundunta insomnia se imis elexentissima supersidera. Love abounds in all from the depths exalted and excelling over every star. Από την συλλογή την ποιητική που επίκειτε να βγει κοντά στο Πάσχα είναι αφιερωμένο στον πατέρα μου και λέγεται αγνοούμενο. Ο πατέρα μου ένα κανάτι κόκκινο ξεραμένο από ήλιο και κάμα του. Ένα καίκι ραγμένο σε μπαλκόνι αντίκρι στη θάλασσα. Πού και πού κάποιες κόρκες κουβέντες. Ένας φίλος του που πνίγηκε στον Ινδικό. Μια σερέα που του κλέψε την καρδιά. Κάθε που μιλάει για τα παλιά, πολύ χρώμα έλκη φουντώνουν στο σώμα του πάνω. Τον αφήνω έτσι να νοσεί. Του κάνει καλό. Έπιασε ψύχρα, πατέρα. 
γυρίζω να πω, μα εκείνο πάλι λείπει. Στην κινούμενη άμμο της λύθης, ξανά αγνοούμενος, του ρίχνω μια ζακέτα στην πλάτη. Supremacy, or the other way around. 
luckily in debt, he had to sell the Greek booty to the British Museum. Unlike the, Bam the Bamiyan giant Buddhas blown up by the Taliban for idolatry, a humiliating perversion prompted Elgin, stimulated by the appropriation of beauty. Today, the abduction of mis misery is of utter contempt for humanity. I feel more drawn to pay attention to my, my my dreams, my night dreams, my my daydreams. Is it your therapist history? <laughs> I took Karine, I deliberately did not mention that in my bio. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> alright. Um well, I don't know. Some people feel they, they feel drawn to explore the unknown, or um, um, I, 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 I guess I, I, I feel drawn to the unknown. I, I, I think dreams are an enormous source of inspiration. I also, um, you know, I think we have to make a distinction between formal surrealism uh, as it was conceived in the 20s of the previous century by André Breton and, and his associates and these people were totally uh, traumatized by the First World War, War and, and they believed that by uh, liberating the unconscious, liberating language, liberating the imagination through automatic writing, um, also to trans speaking, a lot of women of surrealism were into trans speaking um, um, they, 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 in some ways, surrealism, I think, and, and there is somebody here in the audience who is a real scholar of surrealism, <laughs> so I think in some ways, surrealism perhaps could be thought of as, a, as, as an ideological or a, a political movement uh, that perhaps uses art as, um, you know, I read Breton's biography and, and he realized at a certain moment that perhaps a painting or a poem could be more powerful than uh, an anarchist bomb. Like, you know, if it can alter the way that we think. People's mind. Yeah, so, so I think, so for me, I, I think um, uh, I make a distinction between uh, poetry as a practice, as a practice of uh, um, uh, coming, originating, so to speak, from the tradition of men of letters and poetry as a bardic practice or poetry as a form of speaking in tongues and um, poetry as glossolalia, uh, uh, you know, if you start free associating like on the couch and you, you, you're surprised of what kind of themes you, you bump into. So, so I like, I, I feel drawn to the unexpected. I feel, I feel drawn, drawn to this process of, of discovery. Like when I wrote Metaphysics of a Pink Bedroom, 
I, I, I was struck by some uh, prostitutes, or sorry, that's not a political correct word anymore, some sex workers in uh, uh, Omonia, and, uh, and I was just thinking that they, they, they seemed to be from Eastern European countries, and then I thought, you know, how does someone, someone like that end up in that profession, or maybe there were dreams, or and then I started writing, I did not have really a, a kind of uh, map, or I didn't want to, to um, to arrive at a certain destination, and uh, I think um, surrealist methods help with that. Now, if I'm a surrealist or not, I, I'm, uh, uh, I, it's a source of inspiration for me. Voila. <laughs> okay. yeah. Thank you, that's, that's uh, sweet to be able to uh, give more depth and understanding to your poetry. Uh, Elena, I wanted to ask you because, because of Tinos and because, you know, the, the, the <coughs> reputation of Tinos and its holiness and people going to pilgrimage, and I have a friend here who went to pilgrimage in Tinos, mm -hmm. and um, in your poetry I see there's a streak of provocation. So I can't uh, really uh, reconcile the two. And I wanted to know how you came there. Oh, yeah. Speaking for uh, speaking for Tinos, it's not just a holy island. It's uh, an island of um, diversity. I mean, it uh, has uh, so many extremités, let's, uh, let's say. Uh, even the architecture is kind of uh, peculiar or, uh, you know, um, has a touch, has something. But I think my poetry uh, is not uh, influenced by Tinos, not that much. Uh, I think it's by life itself. I mean, uh, um, I focus very much on um, um, love, as always, but uh, also in loss. In, um, because, um, as uh, the grand uh, Clarice Lispector says, the void, yeah. Yeah. Homer you like her, right? I yeah. Her, yes. uh, Clarice Lispector uh, is uh, brilliant. Uh, and she said that the void uh, values as the fool. And that's something that I want to. Um, to, let's say, bring my poetry, that um, something can be great, something can be nothing, but uh, has the same value. Um, I also, inspi something that inspires me, um, it's uh, the nature. Um, when I see nature, nature is everywhere. I mean, maybe it's the pedestrian, uh, something that, uh, you know, a small flower or, uh, green leaf, whatever, and the small things, the small details. Um, so it's, it doesn't have to do with Tinos that much, but as I said, Tinos is my homeland, so it's uh, the unconscious that works. That's all. I, I um, wanted to pick up, and then I forgot on what she said about looking at the unexpected because um, I wanted to introduce also uh, Rana Haddad, who is here with us today and who is the author of The Unexpected Objects of Dune So it's that that reminded me. And I'm sorry, Rana, I didn't do it at the beginning. No. It just, I got confused. No, I mean, it's not necessary. It's, it is necessary. It is necessary <laughs> for people to discover this beautiful story because it's a, uh, it's a, it breaks the stereotype, it breaks the cliche, it breaks the, the tempo, it breaks the everything, and I'll let you discover it, I don't want to, uh, but you, you have the book available here if you uh, would like to buy it. Um, it's the unexpected love objects. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh. There is a little bit of surrealism in it, actually. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> or, you know, the process of writing where you don't know what's going to happen discover as you write, which is like poetry. Yeah. So the, the, the floor is yours. Questions, comments, musicians. <laughs> I have a question. 
right. of you? Like, what what starts you off? Like, is it a um, image, or is it a story, or is it a feeling, or or do you do this automatic writing? Okay, go ahead. Uh, you know, I, I, I uh, you know, Nabokov, mm -hmm. he, he, he spoke, yeah, he spoke about the throb. I, I like that, <coughs> the throb. Something, like something is throbbing, yes. And uh, so, uh, and, and it, it can be a throb and then, uh, you know, I'm, I'm always reading poetry, so uh, um, the first short poem that I read, um, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm often, I find myself often contemplating things that, like, okay, like in 50 years I'm not going to be here anymore. <laughs> so, and I was also reading Henri Michaud, who is a French poet, and uh, so influenced by his kind of metaphysical surrealist poetry, and this, and I was walking around, um, uh, you know, Athens, and, and and observing the peculiar architecture of the city, which looks like a, a mismatch of <laughs> all kind of things, <laughs> and I, um, you know, and I was reflecting about my, you know. In, in, 50 years I'm not here and I, th and I thought well the sky doesn't care <laughs> it's an unreasonably smiling sky and you know the the trees kind of rolled their eyes be because I'm bothered about that so you know this is a throb that uh, but it can also be um, like uh, a vampire uh, called Eurydice it's like an irritation like I'm irritated that the, the uh, this popular imagination of uh, you know the the knight on the white horse and, and the, the the men uh, blah, blah, blah. and so uh, of course now luckily all that is uh, uh, you know pulverizing slowly slowly and then this myth uh, I find that I, I, I thought it occurred to me uh, like maybe she's fine in Hades. She doesn't want to come up. It doesn't look so good, you know. Let's stay. Uh, like, uh, let's stay in the underworld. Aristotle <laughs> and Sophocles in Dante's Circle of Hell. Yeah, yeah, they they're want to. Fine, they're right? fine there, you know. Maybe you don't want to go out. And you know, I was thinking about uh, things like Tinder, or you know, when you're trying to find love, and uh, so it, it's just or how difficult it is in this huge cities like New York or Los Angeles and there's so much of loneliness and people kind of migrate from one sexual experience to another. I don't have anything against it, but I can imagine some but you know, you think I am fine in my Hades. So so this is how uh, you know, an irritation, a throb, a realization that oh five fifty years nobody will even know who I am. <laughs> Um, yeah, sometimes it's uh, direct writing for me, and some others uh, it comes through the night. That's the worst thing could happen because uh, if you feel sleepy, you have to get up. And yeah, you have to get up. And sometimes I have lost so many interesting things because I was really sleepy and I couldn't get out. And I said, okay, tomorrow morning I'll remember it for sure. I'm sure I'll remember it. And just like that, it has gone. Um, uh, sometimes uh, I hear discussions from people around me, and that's an irritation. I mean, just a phrase or something that, um, you know, a discussion or a, a quarrel, uh, that can be a poem. So many things, I mean, it, the only thing you have to, to do is open your eyes and uh, open your ears, and that's it. I mean, it's just like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a poet, Katerina Iliopoulou, who's part of the Poets Agora, who said, like you, that it's a, it's a magnifier, that you zoom in, you zoom in, you zoom in on uh, reality. And um, 
and I also wanted to say because, like, I love all these poets. I really love them. I really, um, all of them that um, I've been acquainted with. And so, um, Clarice Lis Lis uh, Kaiser was translated by Mario Haji Prokopu. So, I invite you to read that. And um, yeah, for me, it's um, it's. it's yeah, more or less what you said. Um, the, the thing is that I feel sometimes I'm, I'm, I, I swell with uh, words, emotion, ideas, and then uh, I have to get them out somehow because it it, it bothers me. There's something in. And I do like you, I, but I don't do like you because I do it at night and I wake up and I write and then, and then after I chisel and chisel and chisel. And you, Yanni, how do you uh, write your songs and how do you get the inspiration from the music? In Greek. Ne, ne, ne. Ano ite. Αγαπώ πάρα πολύ τη μουσική, αυτό από μικρό παιδί. Παίζω μουσική από μικρό παιδί. Από δεν ξέρω. Νομίζω ότι όταν κανείς προσπαθεί πολύ και το κάνει ξανά και ξανά και ξανά, βρίσκει έναν δρόμο. Εγώ πολλές φορές αισθάνομαι ότι έχω βρει έναν δρόμο, πολλές φορές αισθάνομαι ότι προμερή απογοήτευση, ε, σαν να ξεκινάω από την αρχή. Ε, ε, δεν ξέρω τι να σας πω. It's inspiration. Inspiration is not palpable. Inspiration is like I don't know. It's. No, me so tiene doro. Tiene doro. Tiene doro. Yes, I love it. It's a gift. Tiene doro, ala. Se pius dina te afoto doro. Μπορεί να δοθεί δηλαδή και σε ανθρώπους, γιατί δίνονται δώρα διάφορα. Δίνονται καλά, δίνονται και κακά δώρα. Τα κακά δώρα σε ισχυρούς ανθρώπους μπορούν να προσφέρουν τεράστιο πρόβλημα να δημιουργήσουν. Όλα είναι, περαστικά, όλα είναι περαστικά. Δηλαδή, ό,τι κάνουμε στη ζωή ε, το παίρνει ο άνεμος. Τίποτα δεν μένει στην ουσία, δηλαδή... Ε, ε, μπορεί να γράφουμε πολύ ωραία λόγια, μπορεί να παίζουμε πολύ ωραία μουσική, αλλά ε, στο τέλος ε, τίποτα δεν μένει. Δηλαδή θα έρθουν άλλοι που δεν θα μας ξέρουν, θα μας ξεχάσουν, μετά από τρεις τέσσερις γενιές δεν θα υπάρχουμε. Ε, εγώ αναρωτιέμαι αυτό να σας πω την αλήθεια. Τι γίνεται. Πού πάμε μετά, τι κάνουμε. Δηλαδή, ωραία όλα αυτά, αλλά περνάμε πάρα πολύ ωραία, αισθανόμαστε ωραία δημιουργικοί, κάνουμε ο καθένα το είδο του. Αλλά τι γίνεται στο τέλο, Δεν υπάρχει τέλο, γιατί να. Η στιγμή, η αξία τη στιγμή. Αυτό είναι. Αυτό ισχύει. Αυτό ισχύει. Αλλά όταν φύγουμε, τι γίνεται. Δεν αναλαμβάνουμε. Εσένα που σε απασχολεί που είσαι δημιουργό, μπορεί, αλλά. Όχι, δεν σκέφτομαι το έργο μου. Όχι, αυτό δεν το σκέφτομαι. Εμεί δεν σκεφτόμαστε όμω. Μα μας κάνει πολύ ευτυχισμένου ακούγοντα μουσική, Ελληνικά, βήματα ή. Όλοι, όλοι όσοι γράφετε, όσοι, όλοι τέχνοι, mm -hmm. μα κάνει ευτυχισμένου. Αυτή τη στιγμή αυτή. Ναι, αυτό είναι. Είναι έχει πολύ μεγάλη αξία αυτό. Ναι, έχει αξία. Εγώ πάντως νομίζω πως είναι και ένας τρόπος να μείνεις αφάνατος και να νικήσεις το θάνατο με αυτόν τον τρόπο. Όχι πάντοτε, αλλά ένας μεγάλος, ένας δυνατός καλλιτέχνης μπορεί να κάνει κάποια στιγμή ένα κομμάτι που 
θα μείνει όπω τόσο για τα κομμάτια. Δηλαδή, τον Μπετόβεν δεν τον γνωρίσαμε ποτέ, αλλά αφού το ξέρουμε, είναι δικό μα. Δεν θα το χάσουμε ποτέ και όπου και αν έχει πάει, είναι μέσα μα. Και είναι τόσοι, χιλιάδε καλλιτέχνε που το έχουν πετύχει αυτό. Δηλαδή, οι καλλιτέχνε ε, το έχουν νικήσει αυτό με έναν τρόπο. Μα έχουν δώσει μια απάντηση. Οπότε, εσύ με το CD σου, εσύ με το βιβλίο σου. Μα έχει περάσει κάπου, αν όχι όλου, πολλού ανθρώπου. Του έχει αγγίξει, έχουν μείνει, δηλαδή έχουν σχέση.
long been sitting too long, or is it because I have a glass of wine <laughs> or something, and say hi, bye, whatever.